I left Chase for Arthur Anderson, and my job was to make a balance of payments model of the U.S. economy. And I found that uh, this is when there, the, there was a, a balance of payments deficit because of the war in uh, uh, Vietnam. And I was part of a group, Seymour Melman, Terence McCarthy, and myself were the three economists talking about the economic consequences of the Vietnam War. So I, after a year's work at Arthur Anderson, it, it takes that long to make a big statement. I found the entire balance of payments deficit of the United States is military. And that means that when America runs a deficit today and other central banks hold up treasury bills, the third, uh, Russia, China, other countries are all really financing America's military spending throughout the world. Well, my boss at Arthur Anderson said that, uh, you know, he'd shown a copy to the U.S. government and that McNamara, uh, Robert McNamara called him up and said, if you publish uh, Hudson's study, you'll never get another uh, con contract job from the government. So they immediately fired me. I took the uh, monograph to NYU, which published it. It was, uh, uh, it was all published and everything. The Federal Reserve responded by writing a whole review of all of uh, the, uh, the re um, institute that did it at NYU, saying uh, they, they've lost all credibility with my study. Then I was teaching at the new school, and one of my students worked for the Fed, showed me the internal memo confirming that everything that I said was correct. So I thought, well, okay, we have a, 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 you've talked about the dual economy before, uh, you know, the rich people versus the poor. We have a dual kind of economics. One is the kind of economics that people actually working on Wall Street use, and uh, they know that it's all about getting something for nothing. Well, uh, so I think economics really should be part of the history department. And you should study the, the long wave, and you see that Rome fell back. You know, why do societies fall back? It's not just because of bad environment. It's because of basically every, the, the Roman uh, historians got it right. It was the creditor class and uh, it was debt that impoverished uh, the population and forced it into uh, bondage because they had made their money since medieval times by financing international trade. And that, was, that was the only way they could get around the Christian banning of interest. They called it a foreign exchange fee. Uh, and instead of interest, it would be Achi, or foreign exchange. Well, all of that has changed today in America when you have uh, the workers having to get guaranteed, federally guaranteed loans up to 43% of their income goes to pay rent to the landlords. And then 15% is uh, for Social Security and uh, uh, another 10% taxation and, you know, other debts. Ten, if, if you, uh, the, the result, there's so much money paid to the landlords, to the banks, to the uh, fi finance, insurance, and real estate sector, that it's about 75% of the paycheck before they even began to have money to spend on food and clothing. If you gave American workers all the food, all the clothing, all the transportation, everything that they consume for nothing, they still couldn't undersell foreign labor because they have to spend so much money on on the rent and to the, to the fire sector. So finance, instead of somehow becoming the final stage of industrial capitalism, as everybody in the 19th century thought, they rolled it back towards neo-feudalism and we're going back to feudalism now.